Hey everybody, it's Miss A and I am here with a directional video for a long-term investigation. So we previously were looking at um, whether um, direct sunlight or indirect sunlight affects how quickly a seed germinates. And now we're working on, um, we will determine if soil base affects how quickly a seed matures. So we're not looking into um, germination because it'll have a soil base. It won't just be in a plastic bag with water. We're looking at how long it takes that plant to sprout a seedling. So there are some materials and we need to talk about the materials that we will need. All right, so some of the materials we'll need. Now, I'm actually using soda bottles, but you could use shoe boxes. You could use regular boxes, um, anything that can hold a flower pot, anything that can hold soil, some type of soil. So, and you will need um, some type of seeds. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with garden beans. Um, I'm using these because we found that these ones germinated the quickest. So we're going to use these. Um, for my particular project, I will need a cutting utensil. Um, teachers can actually help with this. Um, we would start a slit, and then the children could just cut the rest with a pair of scissors. That would work fine. And we also need some type of soil. So the different types of soils that we will be looking at, or I call them soil bases, um, rocks are one of them. And you could use, like, fish rocks to see if they need if that'll work. Um, potting soil, so that means soil specifically for potting plants. Um, regular just cow manure, regular black soil. Um, sand, so the stuff you find outside. Let me see, what did I say? Rocks, potting soil, regular soil, sand, and one more. I can't remember what it was because there are five. I wrote them down somewhere. I'm a hot mess. Oh, um, and then just um, not just, and then actual sand, like beach sand type stuff. And, um, we have beach sand in the 228 lab teachers. So we need these items in order to basically start our little pot. And again, you could just use a regular pot if you have one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, start my little soda bottle pot. We're reusing, that's what I always talk about, um, reusing and recycling, and this is recycling a product. So I am recycling this product. And you see, kids could, you, a teacher could start it and the kids could do this. They could cut this out. Oh, it smells like soda in there. Probably going to need to wash it out. get this piece out here. So now I basically have, because I've reused my product, I have a, a flower pot is basically what I would call this. So now what I'm going to do, oopsie, 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 uh, what I'm going to do for setup is I'm now going to put my soil base in there. So for this particular one, I am just using outside soil. And you could use something like coffee grounds to see if that affects um, how quickly a seed will mature. You could use lots of different things. You don't have to stick with just the ones that I said as long as basically what we're doing is we're setting up groups and there'll be five different types so you can, can compare the five different types of soil. So this is just some outside soil from out um, near our garden as I make a mess all, whoops, all over my desk. And you see, I'm just placing the soil in my makeshift reusable recycled flower pot here. And you don't want to fill it all the way up, but you do want to have enough soil in there to have a base. All right. So the good thing about reusing this bottle is you can actually use this twofold. Once your plant grows, you can also um, look into um, weathering and erosion with here because we can open up the soda top and put a bucket underneath and when we water, we can see if the plants, how much of the soil leaves our flower pot and goes into our bucket that's underneath to see if plants help with erosion and weathering. So you can also see if that is is um, something that you could add in there as another aspect to look at it. So now that I have this, and I really don't want to stick my 
fingernails in here because I just got them done. Um, let me take this pencil here. So I'm going to create a trench and I'm going to put my seeds in there. So there's a trench for me. Now my pencil's all dirty. But hey, we're kids, we can get our hands dirty. So I'm going to, and honestly, I'm going, we're working on how quickly they mature. So I'm just going to kind of put them in the row. I'm not going to over stack them, like put way too many, but I'm just going to put them in a row. And I think I got two, four, six, eight, ten in there. And then once I, oopsie, I lost a seed. Once I do that, I cover up. And then my last, um, last tool that I'll have to use would be a squirt bottle to spray it and then I would spray it and observe it every single day so this is set up for our LTI which is dirty desk uh, we will determine if soil base affects how quickly a seed matures so we're working on seed maturity for this one thanks for watching everybody